right, guys. I've had a lot of questions uh, from my email and from YouTube and on certain forums asking about the equipment that we use. So Joe and I decided to do a real quick video and uh, explain to you the equipment that we use and real quickly why we use it. I've got the G4 operator pack here. It allows me to carry all the equipment that I need for the, the terrain and the area that we cover. Now, predator hunting, you don't need to have the equipment that we have. There's no need to carry all of the stuff that we use. You can kill a, a coyote uh, using a rifle and a call, basically all you need. But like I said earlier, for the terrain that we cover and the amount of distance that we cover, um, we need to have all of our equipment with us all the time. So this is basically the reason um, we carry the load we carry and carry uh, all of the equipment that we use. Alright, this is my Remington 260 built by Nick Bryan at Spearfish Gunsmithing. Uh, he built some great high plains precision rifles. Custom built, Cerakote job by us here at O'Neill Ops. We're running the O2 Titanium Shadow XL TI suppressor. Um, the Night Force 3.5 to 15 by 56 with the NPR1 reticle. This is just a waterproof cover that comes with the pack. Uh, I use it a lot in the snow and in wet conditions. It'll just cover up the buttstock of your rifle, uh, cover up the objective of your scope or the lens, and uh, just basically keep you keep you all uh, free of, of the elements. Keeps your rifle in good working condition. Some of the stuff that I carry in my pack, I've just got a Molly pouch right here that I carry the high definition video camera in. Underneath of it, there's a separate pouch. I've got the, the Fox Pro controller for my Prairie Blaster. We've got a pouch. We carry extra ammo. Underneath the top strap, we've got a custom-made ghillie hood, multi-cam ghillie hood. Uh, it's real lightweight. It's a really good piece to use uh, in the scenarios that, that we hunt in. You can take it on and off real quickly. And it's a, like I said, it's a light piece to carry around. Real simple to put on and take on and take off. How's everybody doing? I'm Joe with O'Neill Ops. I don't know if you can see me coming in from back there, but uh, the ghillies are a, a wonderful piece of kit to use when you're predator hunting. Uh, coyotes, when they're coming into a call, they're listening for sound and they're looking for movement. And it's, you know, it's just like people say, as long as you stay still, uh, you're not going to have any problems, but with the addition of a ghillie suit to the equation, it's literally, uh, you have the ability to quite quite simply disappear. So, yeah, the ghillies are definitely something worth looking at. So, I'll uh, start pulling out some of my gear as well. Go ahead and continue. All right, guys, in this middle pouch right here, I carry my GPS unit. This is, uh, it's, it's a GPS, and it's got my ballistic software on a memory chip, so uh, everything's combined in here. If, if in the areas we hunt, I don't care who you are. Uh, I know these places like the back of my hand, but when it gets dark or you get in a snowstorm, it's always a plus to, to have a piece of equipment like this to get you out of certain situations just in case. Uh, I've also got in the same pouch a uh, Kestrel weather station. You never know. Uh, it reads the wind. Uh, it tells you the velocity of the wind. It tells you the temperature, the barometric pressure, the humidity, the station pressure. Uh, for those long shots, this is what we carry. All right, in this middle pouch, this is where our big collar's stored. This is a heavy piece of equipment, but once again, um, 
referring back to the areas we hunt, we've got wide open spaces to carry and we need one of the loudest calls they've got and this works great. In the side pouch right here, I carry my tripod for my camera, strap it in, pull it out, hook it up for self videoing and uh, uh, for my partner that wants to video, you got to have a tripod. Another similar case to the same side over here, I carry my my uh, my decoy in, straps on the top of the collar, you got the rod, and then you've got the, the fuzzy decoy. Put it on, put it into your collar, hit the auxiliary button, does some nice twitching, real good way to coax some dogs in. I'll tell you what, we've got some good video footage on this DVD with coyotes coming real close to this decoy. We've got about two more pouches here to cover and then we'll get to Joe's stuff. Um, quite often you'll find in my bags, my little stacks of stuff, we'll have a nice little energy supplement. These, these are, are real plus to take when you're out hunting, uh, you kind of get to the point where you start dragging, pop one of these and you're good to go for another couple hours. You know, especially when, especially during uh, contest time where we get in a contest, you know, when you leave to go hunt it, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, you know, and you spend all day hunting, you know, about the time dusk rolls around, you know, 10, 15 minutes into a set and you start getting a little drowsy. You know, when you're moving around from set to set, having something for a little pick-me-up is a, a huge benefit. All right, guys, one more pouch here. Right here on the front, got the rangefinder. Always a plus for us to carry a rangefinder. Um, you never know when you're going to have to make a long shot. You know, anything over a quarter of a mile in these conditions, it's always a plus. And uh, got to put a plug in to Jared Owens at Alaska Guide Creations. We've got the all-new multi-cam bino pack exclusively for us here at O'Neill Ops. Um, I've went said this before in other videos, but they keep your binoculars covered. They're, they're attached really well for belly crawling, for snowy conditions, for wet conditions. There's no need to worry about getting your eye cups full of dirt or moisture with this bino pack. Waterproof, felt inside, real soft material. Uh, cushioned and plus it's got four pouches. It's got two side pouches, windicator powder in mine. I've got the lens cleaning cloth on the other side. In the front I keep a couple spare hand calls and in the back I've got a, a skin and knife in case I'm way up in the hills and I get a cat or a coyote instead of dragging it all the way out you know I'll hang it up there, skin it out, roll the fur up, put it in the pack and head out with it. I'm the same way with my pack. I've got uh... It's a little bottle of honey. You know, if you were to get stranded somewhere, something as simple as this, a little tiny bottle of honey, can keep you going for a long time. I mean, we're talking days with the kind of energy that you can get in honey. You know, and then I've got my game zipper, my saw, my knife. You know, I, I pretty much have everything in my vinyl pack that I would need in case I wanted to go on a full hunt. I've got gloves in one side if I want to, you know, if I want to go deer, elk hunting, antelope, coyote. And then on my other side, I've got my lens pen, and then my Caldwell Wind Wizard. You know, pretty much just anything that you might need. I've got a backup call in case the the, the e caller goes down. You know, you just never know what you might need. So it's nice to be able to have everything that you that you might need in an emergency right here in one spot. All right, with that everything, I've got everything covered with mine, guys. I'll uh, let. Uh, Joel, go ahead and take this. He can go over his gun, the optics he's using, and some of the equipment he carries in his drag bag. Well, you know, as you can see, James, he's got pretty much anything we could possibly need. So, you know, my pack is pretty easy. Everything that I have to carry, it's a, it's a pretty easy job for me. I just have my rifle in there. I've got uh, a suppressor pouch that I use to have my can in. Um, it's just got a little buckle on there, something that I whipped up myself. Um, my bipod, I've actually got my other bipod as well in case we go to a spot that we need to call where the ground is nice and flat or if we're trying to shoot downhill. It gives you the opportunity to use your short bipod so you don't have to worry about um, you know, having this tall one when you're shooting prone. You know, a lot of guys say that they really like using um, shooting sticks. And myself personally, I tried them one time and I'll never use them again. People say that the tall bipod isn't adequate. But if you actually get in a good shooting position, 
you can see that the tall bipod works very well. There's nothing that you can't do with a tall bipod. Not only that, with shooting sticks, you don't ever want to have to worry about putting them down and forgetting them. With a bipod, you've got everything exactly where you need it. And like I said, I've got a quick detach on there, so if I do need to switch, it just pops right off. Um, I can't say enough about the rifle that I've built here. It's a 243 super short mag. I can use it for anything from big game to varmints, predators, with the different bullets that I load for that. So that's my baby there. That's the, the gun that I use for all my predator hunting. Um, I wanted to mention a little something about the grip that, that I designed. It's called the Raptor Grip. And I did design it as a carry handle. And it balances very well when you're using a rifle that's heavy like this, you know, a little front heavy. But it's more than just a carry handle. It's actually much like a pistol grip. You can use it, you know, to hold on to and use to swing. And you can use it to hold like this. You can use it to hold like that. You can use it to hold like this. It just depends on what kind of rifle you're using. It works really well for a rifle length with a long heavy barrel. It works equally well with a short lightweight rifle. Um, the other stuff that I've got in here, it's pretty simple. I always take around extra ammo. Here I've got 40 rounds. Um, I always take, you know, I've got my small knife, but this is more of like a survival type knife. Um, it's got a good heavy duty handle. It's got a place for a lanyard where you could tie it to a stick if you needed some sort of a, you know, of a survival knife. Um, the other things that I've got, you know, I've always got extra mags in case, you know, having, having extra ammo is always good, but if you've got like a semi-auto, like an AR-15, and you're out in the field and one of your mags happens to break, let's just say, for example, you break a spring, or if it's real cold, you break a mag, it's always nice to have extra mags around. Uh, another thing that I always make sure I have is just your standard uh, repair kit, AR-15 parts kit, repair kit. You never want to be out, you know, 5, 10, 15 miles on a long hunting trip and then be another 2 or 3 miles out into the field and have something go down on a gun that, you know, it does have quite a few moving parts. You don't want to have some of your parts break down on you. So I always have a spare kit in there. I've got uh, a couple wrenches, a couple screwdrivers. Um, one thing that, that uh, I use when I'm back home, we've had a couple mountain lion sightings and we've always wanted to get you know, a, a good mountain lion coming into a predator call. And they're very, very elusive, especially out here in the prairie. But um, one thing that I've, I have started doing is inside my drag bag, this is a double rifle case, but I've got my drag bag, my sidearm, my nine millimeter Glock with a suppressor and a green laser, which works really nice. And then I also have three 33 round mags on the outside of my my case. So I've always got ammo for my for my sidearm and that's something that we're really going to try and do this season. We're going to try and get a couple coyote kills on video with the handgun. That's going to be very exciting having a coyote come right into your lap. Yeah, it, along the lines of the of the sidearm deal, I forgot to mention I always carry my Glock. Um, it's not suppressed, but I do carry it. You never know Joe was mentioning the uh, the uh, mountain lion situation. You never know you're sitting up there calling with your back to a tree or, or out in the wide open with your back to a, to a brushy bottom or something. For some reason, you always got that in the back of your mind. You never know what you're gonna see. It's always a plus to carry a sidearm. I'm just used to it. I carry one everywhere I go, regardless what time of the year it is, regardless what I'm doing. It's something that I carry. And uh, like Joe said, we're gonna be getting some great kill shots using suppressed handguns. We're actually designing a, uh, a vest right now that'll allow us to carry the suppressed uh, FN tactical on the chest so it'll be quick access um, when we're making some sets. I'm not really sure if James mentioned it or not, but you know, another thing that, like I said, I'm not sure if he mentioned, but um, the first thing that I really think of when I get ready to go coyote calling is my boots, my footwear. Um, when it's cold out, especially out here on the prairie, um, we're in a pretty nice location right now. The wind is blowing 40 miles an hour. We're down in a low spot so we can get out of the wind. But, you know, especially in January, February, where it's zero degrees or, you know, maybe even five or ten below with a 20 mile an hour wind, it's absolutely brutal. But the coyotes are still out. The coyotes are still hungry. They're looking for food. 
they got to survive the winter, so we're out there trying to call in some of the most extreme conditions South Dakota has to offer. And footwear is a big part of that, you know, using uh, military style Mickey Mouse boots that are rated down to 20 below. Unbelievable pair of footwear. And then, you know, this time of season where it's late, uh, late uh, February, and it, or excuse me, late uh, November, and it's not real cold yet, um, I like to use, you know, a really lightweight, more, it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a workout shoe, like a fitness shoe. It's a really, really lightweight hunting boot. Good, breathable, and that's just something that, that I personally like to use. You know, it's the same thing with your, uh, your pants, your undershirts. You, you have to have something that's uh, comfortable, moisture wicking, windproof, rain gear. You always want to have some sort of rain gear. Make sure you look at the weather, conditions like that. So. Yep, yep. Another thing I never mentioned about some of the equipment that I use, I, I, I kind of like uh, to feel the trigger. I'm just one of those guys. I usually take most of my gloves, regardless if they're a $50, $60 pair of gloves, and hack the fingers off. I just like the feel of the trigger. A lot of times, like Joe has mentioned, when we're hunting those real cold conditions, your fingers tend to get a little bit numb, but uh, it's always easy to, to stuff them in your pockets or carry those little heat packs in your pouch, warm them up, and uh, along the lines of that cold weather situation, we do wear uh, a lot of base layer. We wear a base layer, uh, some other additional layers, and in certain cases, we wear the extreme cold weather system clothing uh, when we're up here hunting in cold weather. Woo! Looks, sounds good. Yeah, heck yeah. Hey, what, well, you never went over what scope you're using. Oh, I'm running the, uh, this is a Night Force. Uh, the NXS this is the five and a half to 22 by 56 with the NP1 RR reticle. Um, it's it's kind of designated as a varmint and it, kind of a varmint and a small hunting reticle, but I think it works excellent as far as predators and even big game go. Um, it's got small circles on it where you can use as uh, range estimators if you have your if you know how to use the reticle properly, which you know I I always feel that a lot of the times when people are are uneasy about switching from a duplex to something that is busy the reason is is because they don't understand how it works and they don't want to take the time to learn um, you know myself being of the mindset that every advantage you can get you should take I love being able to use uh, use the scope to its advantage whether it be dialing your minutes for elevation and windage holding over with them with the uh, hash marks you know everything about that optic is is uh, very sturdy, well built. I actually took a, a pretty nasty fall here lately, and I I probably went about 10 or 15 feet down a hill, or not a hill, down a cliff, and landed with my scope down in the rocks. And um, my actually my scope caps took uh, most of the brunt of that force, but you know the scope held up great. Nothing wrong, nothing slipped. Everything's still zero. So absolutely, I absolutely love Night Force. And the worst part about it is. I'm spoiled and I'll probably never use anything else. So, absolutely, check out uh, the Night Force optics there. Yeah, and as, as you guys can see, uh, we really do like the multi cam camel pattern out here. It's amazing how this stuff works. Even in the middle of the summer, when, when everything's green and uh, when the weather gets cooler in the fall and everything dies off and the, grand, the grass gets tan, this stuff just seems to change color as well. It's a great camel pattern. Um, we like to use it a lot for, for almost everything that we do. And uh, along those lines, Joe's got his painted a lighter multi-cam. Uh, I tried to paint my gun a little bit lighter, rustic multi-cam as well for out here in these conditions. And this is really just a portion of the equipment that we really have. We've got a lot more and we're planning on showing you guys in, in other videos. And uh, if you want to learn more about us, if you want to learn more about the equipment we use and what we're planning for the future, such as uh, upcoming DVDs, some more product reviews, uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook and our YouTube channel and even hit us up and follow us on Twitter. We're trying to get things going and, and we really feel that, that the stuff that we're doing, uh, you guys will really enjoy. Absolutely. What he said. You guys like our DVD? Because we're gonna fucking kill coyotes. Beep.